Welcome to the first annual Atrial Havington Wet T-Shirt Concert. We have four sopping wet boys just ready to show their pepperoni nips. Guests, introduce yourselves, for I am Chewy. <laughs> wow. let's, let's just sit here in, in quiet for the next yeah, like, minute and make you feel awkward. Let's oh, let that, that one rest. <laughs> let's, let's, yeah, let's. You said four of us have pepperoni nipples. What's the fifth one got? So really, dimes. there's five of us here. We got Plus you dimes. Who, who's somebody's who's got dimes. I got dimes. Somebody, somebody got fleshy little dimes, dude. Nah, dude. Taper <laughs> got right. traffic cones. I do. <laughs> Topher's, Topher's stacked up over there. It becomes yeah, dimes yeah. when it's cold. Topher got yep, a couple. So... <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> 45 ACPs, dude. Well, I'm well, Grimsley. At least, said, at least I said the fucking intro right this time. No, you did an awesome yeah, job. Awesome like, intro, I, bro. I, I said it's the Atrials Havoc, then. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's what you mean. Yeah. No, you uh, did kill. Yeah, I got, I got it right this time. <laughs> this is, uh... So, anyway, this is the first episode with our lovely drummer, Topher. And the first episode that we're all sopping wet. And all and here, yeah. pleasure. So, so to Topher, ha how's back. life been? Yeah, busy <laughs> AF. I've been kind of on the sidelines watching as all the stuff's been unfolding, but just a lot going on. And now that things are starting to calm down, it's good to start seeping back into this sopping wet juiciness that we've got going on here. Matthew started that. Chewy started that. That's, tonight. Yeah, anyway, that's nasty. Well, so do you have any awesome chew questions for us tonight? Me? Yeah. You started oh, the last two. Oh, you started us no, off with them. Well, uh, no, actually, because of you texting us, uh, texting me earlier this week, uh, I was expecting you to just mm -hmm. go ahead and start off with your story that you had. Uh, you said it was some kind of wild. If we do like want a question, story. I do have a good one. Yeah. If we do still want to start with a question. Let's start yeah, with we, a question. We should, we should, okay. We All right. I heard this. This is one I heard on Norm McDonald's podcast, the Michael Jordan of podcasting. Um, you have the option of taking a month long vacation with your wife or in case or if you're not married, any woman you might choose. Everything is great. You literally have everything you have you need on this island. You can bring friends if you want. You know, you can bring like four or five people. You and your boys just have a good time. The only catch is you don't remember it at all at the end of it. At the end of it, it's like you just month later, same day, you just snap back in and you just don't even have any memory of it. Do you do that's, it? I'm that's like so going to the Why beach with you, you Clayton. Yeah, that's Why that's wouldn't awesome. you do it, right? Why yeah. wouldn't you? But then, exactly. like, what do you, I get, it like, what do you get out of it, really? I mean, nothing, I guess, just so, a good time. Well, but. My, my only question is, are you aware that you're going to lose your memory of it, or you're yes. just... Oh, yes, that you're, one, you're fully aware crazy. going in. Yeah, yeah I'm that's gonna do the catch. I'm gonna this go is in, the deal. Yeah, I'm going to go in and go as hard as I possibly can, then. Actually, I still, hold on, hold on. I one second. Yeah. Okay. So going into it, I'm aware that I'm going to lose my memory of it. Coming out of it, am I aware that something happened and I just don't know what it is? Uh, that I don't. That's because that changes everything. I'm not doing it if that's the case, dude. The anxiety of losing a month of your fucking life. There's <laughs> okay. no way. For the I sake of the right. hypothetical, let's let's pretend that like you come back in on the same day you left. It's just a month that. It just, it was a month for you, but you come back into your life as if it didn't happen. I don't know. I'm going then, back. I'm, I'm still, I'm, I don't know. I, feel like I, I think I would do it. My life at that point. I mean, to be honest with you, though, if you're losing a month of your life by going on vacation, are you technically really enjoying yourself anyway if you're doing just a regular month of just work and daily grind? This is, this I mean, I think that I would still take it. It is. But I think I would take it for sure. I mean, if you, if I forget it and stuff, I think it, if you're going into it knowing that you're going to forget everything, 
Mm-hmm. I think that you're genuinely going to get the chance to do some shit that you will never get the chance to do otherwise. You can do, yeah. you, I mean, you, to be honest, you can, it would be but all traumatic shit, but you can do the, some stuff that, like, there's no guilt. It is a guilt free oh, month. Are you, are you, <laughs> are you talking evil stuff, dude? Are you going to take people out on this island? <laughs> Just because and get you really evil. Now, now William is the for. scariest one. I'm just saying, like, like, you get a yes, guilt-free I, month. Uh, guilt- William's going to go over to this like, island. I legitimately and... don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> William's going to bring four people he loves and one person he hates. That would be William, the William move. William, yeah, it's going to be a clue freaking. It's going to be a board yeah, game the, of the, clue is what it's going to be. One William person killed hates. somebody. How'd he do it and where'd he do it? <laughs> <laughs> but not even I would know. He's going to be himself. He's going to clone himself. And I would be so innocent. In the in my own mind, and just so, could you imagine the horror of them figuring out what you have done, but you have no idea that you did it, and the horror that you did something without knowing it? That sounds ridiculous. Yeah, I'm not doing this. I don't think I'm doing this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's, there's no way. I get anxiety on Sunday morning. Like this, there's no way. <laughs> on Sunday morning. <laughs> yeah. Dude. I almost yeah. went to church. You're missing last out month. on church. <laughs> <laughs> also, happy yeah. Easter, everybody. Yeah, happy. Uh, yeah. Actually, yeah, a little bit after Easter, but I hope everybody uh, got a, you know, a freaky bunny come into their house and give you uh, yeah. candy, which is ridiculous. Yeah. That's my yeah. kind of Easter. That's a scary the... freaking. Well, well, since since you asked uh, for the chew question, uh, the the one that's been on my head because I've been reading and like watching a lot of the shit that's been going on uh, of the Dan Schneider shows, which one would you like to be on? I watched all of the documentary. Which one would you rather? You be want on? to be on the documentary? What, yeah. What, what what Dan Schneider show would you be on? <laughs> oh God! <laughs> you, you I, like to be no, in one. Which one is it? If I had to I, be in one, it seemed like the one with the least amount of problems was like. I Carly, to be honest with you. Yeah. I but feel like I Carly. The thing is, there's not much room for characters on I Carly. Like, they'll probably have you doing stuff like they did to Gibby. I was about to say, you're, like, right, you're the next right, Gibby. <laughs> your thing is, is you're going to sing the national anthem while you scoop ice cream and put it on your head. It's going to be hilarious. I hope, I hope that guy's doing okay. I'm sure he is. I'm sure he's great. Gibby? Yeah, sure. see, I didn't watch the documentary, but I've seen, of course, TikToks and stuff of people. Yeah, I've only playing. seen a few clips. I don't really know all of what happened, but yeah. I know it's pretty like fucked up. Yeah, I, I know like Drake Bell has like come out and said some stuff. Yeah, but, and then Josh Peck has come out and said some stuff, kind of like oddly defending or like denying or something. But other than that, I don't really have much. Uh, no, okay. Well, I, I will say this because I looked up like, what did Josh Peck say or has he said anything? No, he uh he gave his full support to Drake and everybody that came forward and said that this is okay. awful and everything. Like he was fully on everybody's side. Um, but Dan Schneider, he is not good. He is bad. But to be honest with you. Hang he's, on. He's, no, no, no. You're, <laughs> hang on. You're telling me. <laughs> Sorry, William. Get to your point. I just, the My, Dan Schneider is bad. Thing. <laughs> Got me. But well, the thing is, the, they're, 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 they're making this documentary about him, but truth be told, it's the other three that caught doing, uh, there's basically, there's three l- workers at Nickelodeon that get caught, uh, and arrested and put in jail for diddling. Kid, yeah, diddle. Okay, so what you're saying is like a couple of them, uh, Dan Snyder. Dan Snyder fuck, didn't do any of that. He, he was just a creep. Stuff, but it wasn't as bad as those other guys. Yes. Okay, gotcha. Like the guy, like they made like really, I would say the a large portion of the documentary is about what happened to Drake Bell with this guy named Brian Peck, who was a like he was a super oh, creep, super. Heard creep. that name? Yeah, yeah. I, I've I've seen that name on TikTok or some shit like that. 
Listen, Dan win. Schneider sucks and everything, yeah. but that guy right there is a demon. I was yeah, gonna say, I so Dan was kind of like enabling it in a. In a in I a don't think he wasn't enabling it, and he claims, and everybody says he he has no you're idea that it happened. And, sorry, am I talking too fast? It's a, it sounds like you're screaming. Oh shit! I might be talking. I might be too loud. Let me make sure I'm not like. I'm make sure I'm not clipping here. Oh, where'd my shit go? I just assumed my phone speaker sucked, which is yeah. That was, I was like, it's usually I was safe like, to assume my phone sucks. Okay, I turned everything well, down. Is that oh, better? Oh, that, like, I think that's louder. <laughs> louder. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Talk again. That's louder. That's okay, louder. No, that's oh, wait. That's, that's better. better. That's fine. That's, that's way better. Going. Yeah. Well, hopefully the audio isn't too okay, destroyed. Yeah. It'll be. <laughs> it is what it is at this point. Let's go. Maybe hey, fun. I thought it was gonna be fun. Anyway, you were at the uh, front of the mix, dude. It's chill. That's all. I'm good. At, I am at the front. Was it distorted? Uh, not really. Maybe a little. I don't know. It, okay. I thought it was just my headphones, but maybe. We'll yeah, just same. roll with it, it anyway. Yeah. But anyway, that Brian <laughs> we'll, we'll Peck just, guy was. It, it, you're just demon. excited for 11 minutes. That's all it is, man. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> you're just real excited for 11 minutes. <laughs> yeah, dude. <sighs> Damn, boy can't that contain sucks. himself. Hey, dude, here's the thing. You want to bring that energy, though. <laughs> exactly. Dude, exactly. I'll, get, I'll get loud for 11 minutes, maybe even 12. That's true. <laughs> I'd be in my girl's ear like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for 12 anyway. minutes? Jeez. Anyway. Damn, good for y'all, fellas. <laughs> well, con- continue, continue the Dan Schneider defense. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, don't, don't do that to me. That is not what's going on here. Hell no. No, no I'm Dan Schneider advocate. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm free, telling you, he was, Dan. He, Dan he's, a, Dan. he's a serious creep. I love, though, yeah. that somebody, I saw somebody reference in a, a YouTube comment. I think it was of some video about the documentary. They said, you, <laughs> SpongeBob has been warning us the entire time about Dirty Dan. And Ooh. I fully believe that that's dude, where that oh came from. God. Dude. <laughs> um, oh, man. Dude, speaking of that, every single middle school rumor you heard about P. Diddy was right the whole time. Oh, man. that's that... Everybody was right about Diddy. He diddler. <laughs> Did he do it? <laughs> Did he do it? He's on his private jet flying to somewhere without extradition. So he's you're acting like he did it. I don't. Man, I don't even insane. really know what he did, other than like, I I really don't know like what crimes he's being. I, like, I think uh, the feds are on of. him for child trafficking. So oh again, this is God. some form of trafficking. Yeah. So this is of course like TikTok, allegedly. They are like garbage, you know, shit that's coming in from TikTok feed. I don't know how accurate this stuff is, but from what I've piece together he's basically like in ways thrown parties and stuff at his mansion and uh has like security cameras and he's basically him and other people are recording these parties and he's basically blackmailing the celebrities who are participating in like you know, bad acts at his mansion, whether it's messing with underage girls or drugs or whatever it is, but he's using that blackmail to have a a leg up on them in the industry. So basically he's got all of this shit at the top and you've got to do what he says. That's crazy. That's really, really gross. Also too, I think is something to do with like trafficking and stuff, but I don't know how true some of this stuff is. Is just, is this another, are we about to see a whole nother door open into some Epstein style stuff? I mean, I think it's going to be like that. Yeah. From what I gathered, this is like the Epstein of like the the music music industry, industry. but this apparently has started from like years ago and like I, I don't know i'll have to touch base when i learn more about it but it's it's not good whatever it is i want to ask y'all which one of y'all just made the sound of somebody ripping ass while he's telling that horrible story and it made me laugh like i'm laughing <laughs> yeah, at him I, telling the, mm. I saw you <laughs> looking at me 
I burped and I smiled because I saw you just just go like oh <laughs> you almost lost Dude, it. I, I was just I like I'm just gonna smile. Rip bass. And I'm sitting there <laughs> laughing. Tom Topher says fucking underage blah blah I'm like damn dude that's tough oh, man. man can't take him nowhere god damn well okay anyway I want to hear the story about the show like what what the hell happened dude all right so Tell I guess us. I'll kind of start it a little bit Zeb and I'll let you do the fun part okay the back uh, end okay of the night okay okay I'll pick through so, yeah I went uh, had a Grimsley show in Dahlonega, Georgia. Really awesome people. Really good time. All those that came out to it, it was really cool to meet everybody, hang out. Uh, I get we were in a is that University of North Georgia? I think that yep. it's at, yeah. Well, really good show. Uh, we had some like uh, some like sound issues to begin with, and uh, shout out Enter, uh, the yeah. artist that opened for me. He. Uh, he really did great for you know the issues that that our sound system had, but anyway, uh, we needed a place to stay. I realized, damn, like this is a longer drive than I thought, and I booked a place real quick on Expedia. Really didn't think about it. I was all, oh sweet, it's seven minutes from the uh, from the venue. Cool. Uh, so. I run over there real quick before the show and everything. Didn't think anything of it. I, okay, quick side note that I never told you, Zeb. Uh, they texted me. They had my number. They, these are super, like, informal uh, people. Uh, as Well, you'll find out more why anyway. But I went into the room I thought was correct. Okay, I went into the wrong room. And... Uh, I had to take a shit. <laughs> I shit in somebody else's room and the people came in. <laughs> <laughs> they had they called they called the lady to come and clean the room. They There's asked, a stranger you... in my room taking a shit. <laughs> He's leaving. Well the me thing a is present. there was nothing in like they just got there like at the same time or the, the whoever it was, they were like the the room was empty and it was like a, they said she said that it, you had to go up the stairs to get to where um, the room was. And I had saw this little tiny staircase on the front up to something. I was like, okay, that's not it. So I went to the back, and it went up to a room over there. I was like, okay, this is our room. It was not. And so that was really embarrassing. And they said, did you use the bathroom, honey? And I was like, yeah, I did. <laughs> you left the stand. Dude, it was, <laughs> it, I, it, was em, it was embarrassing as hell because then they had to go and clean it. They like they got the lady to come clean it. I was embarrassed. <laughs> if only you had some some uh, cinnamon. Well, anyway, yeah. No, no. <laughs> she, she looked at the cleaning lady, and be like, "Do not go in there." Well, she was like the she was kind of like the hostess. She was kind of I believe she was more of the like hostess for the place or whatever. Oh, anyway, okay, yeah. Anyway, I found she the right the room. It, right? I, no, I think she was. That's not know. even her job. Not my problem. God. Listen. <laughs> why did You'll they leave the out. doors open? Listen, they have a listen. terrible listen. They have a terrible system. Why did they leave the doors unlocked and say we're leaving the keys for you on the mm -hmm. tray? Just go in whenever you need to. I mean, you you were able also to. you'll the find door out was open. You were why there's to. no reason to feel bad. Yeah, yeah, you'll find out why there's don't, don't feel bad. Anyway, oh, okay, yeah, carry on. So I went to uh, the right room, which, to be honest with you, it was kind of a dope room. I'm not gonna lie; it was it was bigger. Like we would have had a good night there. Um, would we? It would have been comfortable for all of us. Yeah, anyway, all of us. If it was yeah. a normal room, but it would have been a hoot. A all I did was hoot. grab the key and run. I wasn't. I, I'll say this: I was not paying attention to my surroundings. I just <laughs> didn't see anything. I just grabbed the key, put it in my pocket. And I was literally there at the place for like less than five minutes. Like all that transpired within five minutes. I grabbed it, went to the venue. Then all that happened. Then after the show, it was great. We hung out with everybody, did a meet and greet. I signed some shoes. I signed some jackets, signed some set lists, some flyers, all that cool stuff. And then we went with a bunch of those people from the show to a Waffle House. And then I will let Zeb take over from here. All right. 
So we get to Waffle House, and it's good night. It's Waffle House. We're all feeling good. We're like, man, we're going to get food. We're going to go back. We're going to conk out at the hotel. We're going to get a good eight hours. We're going to wake up. We're going to get home. So we're all having fun. We're just talking. And me and William are at the table with uh, two of the guys. And then Jerome. Two of the guys from the show that we're hanging out. Yeah, two of the guys from the show. And Jerome, shout out Jerome, our drummer. He was sitting at the booth next to us with three locals, t- students. Three of the other, three, know, other, three of the other students. people that were there for the show. Like, he, he yeah, was, yeah, like yeah, we were yeah. all sitting with people from the show. Yeah. So they were telling them about the area, telling them about the history of the area, some fun facts. Like, did you know that people from Dalinaga are called Nuggets because, <laughs> because the area has a rich history of gold mining. It was even the first gold rush before the West Coast gold rush. People were rushing there to mine gold. A lot of active gold mines, huge tourism industry around gold, whatever. Yeah, uh, this place was in the news in 2019 for something I'll tell you about in a minute. Real big story. Um, A lot of protests. But uh, they were telling them, like, yeah, they uh, have really had trouble keeping people of color in the military part of the college and just at the college in general like they've been opening it up to a lot of people trying to get a lot of people to move here like sign on bonuses all kinds of stuff just trying to get people in and keep them and uh apparently they kept getting run out of town by the kkk damn um and in fact in 2019 there was a woman who owns like half of the apartment complexes maybe three quarters of the apartment complexes in the town i did a little bit of extra research really notorious like that she's awful it's awful to live in her apartments um mostly students who end up there she had a giant sign put up that had a picture of a clansman on it throwing up the salute that said historic kkk meeting spot because in history they would meet there what the fuck? <laughs> and she had that sign up, and there were a bunch of protests, and the city made her take it down. Anyway, um, it turns out that part of the one of the buildings that she owns is this hotel that they host a lot of like KKK meetings, and it's basically like just it's associated with them. She's a major donor of theirs, and uh, you know supposedly they have a lot of meetings there. People have had some sketchy experiences in that area. Um, at and, the place we were going to stay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, yeah they were like, fun. they asked us, they were like, hey, are you going to crash? In, are you going to crash anywhere? Y'all driving home? They were like, no, we got a hotel. And they said, there's only one hotel in this town. And uh, we're like, oh. And our drummer, Jerome, happens to be black and relayed this information to us as we were leaving. So... We decided that we definitely should not go should and not stay. stay at that hotel. So yeah. we decided to just drive back that night. And as we are leaving, we pass a small house with a flag that has the white background with the red cross shield on it. No, dude. And... I was just, I just kept it on cruise control. Me and Jerome had worked out a system. All I was doing was driving him out of town. Yeah. Yeah. We, we I was just, talking to them. I was like, I was like, we're guys, we're, we can't stay here. We're not staying here. Like, you know, I asked Jerome, I was like, you know, at first, like there was a split second. We were like, okay, well it probably, everything would probably be fine. Like, you know, but the truth of the matter is, is like, we're not risking anything there's no we don't want yeah, any get chance the of fuck anything. out of there and, yeah yeah, yeah. And, so, it was, and it was so it was so gross and just out of nowhere and it was like mind-blowing to like know that that was happening and see it firsthand after yeah. such a good show just that like slap and then we stopped for gas and jerome happened to see another black guy walking out of the gas station and stopped and was like hey man just a quick question is the kkk active around here and the and the guy was like, I've been here for six years and I haven't had any run-ins with him, but you need to go where you're going and who you're staying with. Yeah. Damn. Damn. Yeah. So, oh, God. Oh, my God. And, you know, I we were just, my, my honestly worst, like, what was stressing me out more than anything 
was getting pulled over for whatever yeah. reason. That was what was making Y'all me nervous pulled was over? getting pulled over. No, 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 no. no, no, no. no. But oh, that was the fear. Get pulled over. That was what was concerning me. Dude, you got. I was fear. driving you by myself. Like, Zeb, you, you were driving. Mm-hmm. I, I was driving I, I Jerome. All right, so that was just a glimpse into what it's like to be a black guy driving. Is what it was. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's crazy, dude. Well, the, the truth Zeb, of the matter that's the is, is like you'll ever be. Yeah. Well, I mean, the truth of the matter is that we had oh god we had no idea that something like that was like gonna happen and it was just like uh, uh, listen none of the stuff we're saying right now reflects on any of the people that were at my show and we talked to those were all the sweetest kindest people and like I, they have nothing to do with that they just go to the university that's not on them like it's, Dude, it, like, it's just they're the, honestly it's, great guys for warning y'all yeah, but, yeah. This this whole time, I've been wondering like what might have happened if we didn't go to Waffle House with them. Like, I'm glad I suggested that just offhand. Um, I I I believe that it was late enough where like nobody was gonna care and nobody was gonna see. But the thing is, is like I don't know. It feels it. We couldn't risk a single it, chance. It, no. What wor- what really worries me is they were doing things like texting you from a personal number. This isn't yes. a place. This is a place that like can delete all paper trails in <laughs> very fast. Yeah, yeah. Tow our car because they probably know the tow the, the tow truck guy. Dude, and like, like it could have been dark. The fucking building. Like she can get into your room. She has a key to every room. Like she can get in there so fast. I mean, and there, security there's security no, isn't high. I will say that I learned. There's no saying. There. Yeah. <laughs> There's no, like, we didn't feel any obvious threat other than the warning and then just general, like, bad feelings. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Like, when we didn't see anything happen, but the thing is, like, we saw literally all the signs. Uh, and we just had to get and out the of there. Flags. Well, that's what I mean. Yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> that and crazy. that was just... That yeah. was... Yeah. Well, Zeb, tell him the story isn't over. Zeb, oh, tell God. him what tell him what what happened on the way back okay. just like 10 minutes later. So, if anybody to happens to be familiar with the Appalachian Trail, we weren't too far from it as we were driving from Georgia to Tennessee. A thing that happened in that region we found out was also the Trail of Tears. So the road that we took for a good three to five miles, maybe longer, was marked every like mile or so with a brown sign that said Trail of Tears, original route. Yeah. Wow. And I'll, so, I'll say this, like, you know, I, Zeb and them came, gave me more of a rundown on the history of it while we were talking on the phone. And uh, anyway, I, I'm going to, Listen, Zeb, don't tell, don't tell Nayla, don't, don't tell, don't tell that I'm, I'm gonna say this, okay? But I started thinking, if we were to ever see a skinwalker, I was literally thinking that this is where we were gonna find one, and yep. we, we were driving. I was nervous, and dude, there were just at, at one point we kind of like were rolling by, and there were just these two deer together just standing on the side of the road just staring at us as we were passing i was like man yeah you know that's crazy like i was sitting there like this is if there was ever a hub for skinwalkers it's this place oh dude it's what's scary. crazy about that is um when d goes that's their thing they uh they look like deer they look like deer people they so yeah yeah uh, wh- a what a wendy <laughs> it's very similar to what he said he uh, said it like <laughs> Y'all never There's heard. A, that's the one you're not supposed I know to him. say. So we're all fucked. Yeah, now. dude. One of my favorite mm-hmm. facts about him is uh, in some legends. Well, I guess not a fact, a legend. I don't know. Whatever you say. Um, that they sound further away the closer they are. Yeah. So if they so sound things, really far away, then they are right up up. They're right up your ass. If they sound really yep. close, then they're really far away. That's unnerving. Not great, right? Yeah. 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 Totally freaky, and uh, you're not supposed to whistle at them. So uh, if you're going through the woods and you just watched Andy Griffiths, you just keep that to yourself. You know? <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, 
Just just hone that in your head. Don't whistle along. Mm. This is a completely random question, but it reminds me. When I was a little kid, I for I don't know why it worked out this way, but I got in my head that humming was for women and whistling was for men. Did y'all ever feel that way? Never once. Uh, I'm not good enough at whistling it. to get You're just misogynist, me. man. Maybe that's it. But I just remember at some point when I was a little kid, I was just like, huh. That, yeah, that seems to work out. All right. Yeah, <laughs> I'll keep that in mind. Is that you just hate women? <laughs> It's weird because the older I've gotten, the more I hum and whistle. I I just randomly do it. Yeah. Well, in Zeb's case, the older he got, the more he hates women. (laughs) No, that's not. not. He's like like Zach from Zach and Cody when they're talking about the wage gap. And he's like, let's shoot for 40. (laughs) Oh, God. Zeb's out here (laughs) finding gender roles. (laughs) Uh, yeah. <laughs> so christopher topher man how's the room coming along how's the uh, it's already looking cool are you getting close to having your dream set up in there uh you're only seeing this quarter <laughs> over here <laughs> just in, naked but uh <laughs> yeah i've got the electric kit behind me and i've got the fiddles over here but um Hopefully, as each episode comes along, you'll see more and more stuff put up on the wall. I've got some pretty cool ideas of what I want to do uh, in here. More but... and more Satan as the weeks go by. Yeah, yeah. Dude, that room is going to get darker and darker. I'm surprised you painted it white. It's gray. It's just uh, it's oh, hard to tell okay. because of the the lighting. But yeah, the, like the baseboards and stuff are black. But yeah, I went with Ooh, the gray. The room's got corpse paint. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I wanted to uh, to put up my acoustic kit in here, but realistically, <laughs> it's just easier to play the electric kit, and that's the whole point of me having it. Uh, but the acoustic kit's stored up, so if I do want to break <laughs> break it out, but big envisioning is that hopefully I can have the acoustic or excuse me the electric kit and all the guitars set up so that if we decide to rehearse and play shows here in Greenville. We can all cram in here and hear each other. Yeah. Speaking so. of speaking of that, like I don't really care to. I don't really care. I'm, I'm going to bring it up on the podcast because I I'm uh, I think this kind of stuff is interesting. But we are shooting. We actually just uh, we have a booking agent trying to get us into the Greenville area and into the. Pennsylvania areas, either Pittsburgh, Mid- middle Hershey, Pit- yeah, Middle Pittsburgh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's or like middle Central Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania area, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I'm excited to travel up there and play a show. I think uh, that'll be cool if we can all go and like uh, do it. Oh yeah, and- I forgot. I forgot to say we should also look at DC as well too. But DC would be great. We know bands in DC, DC would be fantastic. Yeah, I think this would I'm be a so. good segue into something I want to like ask you guys i've noticed as we have uh kind of gone along in the music journey we have always i'd like to think had somewhat similar but different taste in music uh but i am curious to know what like one or two bands or artists that you guys have been jamming uh because i would like to think that if someone is listening to this they can at least relate or pick out some artists that they'd like to check out uh, because of how vast each one of our music tastes uh, can be from each other. Let me pull up. Okay, my well, how, yeah. How about you start it? What are you, uh, what are you listening to? So my music taste is kind of changed course, just a smidge. Uh, I've been really into, specifically sludge and like doom stuff first band that comes to mind is a band called mono lord uh they are super doom slow heavy just imagine that stereotypical like black sabbath style you know inspired band but just it sounds like a dump truck is just backing into your fucking room like it's just so mm. rumbly uh 
but I've been into that stuff. And then I've been into a lot of, uh, I hate using this word, but like screamo type stuff. Uh, so I'm going to go see a band actually in Nashville coming up soon, uh, called infant Island. Uh, they're mm. really good, really intense. Where, where are they going to be? Uh, honestly, can't remember. Probably the end but, uh, or something like that. Or dark the end or the basement yeah. or the OG basement. Something, yeah. something around there. But uh, Infant Island is uh, really good. But my main band that I've been absolutely jamming like crazy is a band called Portrayal of Guilt. They like incorporate this like crust blackened screamo hardcore type it's just like everything and it's just so gross sounding but it's intense mm -hmm. their drummer's an animal the vocalist comes in he's just wailing on the vocals bass players just up there just hammering down it's good shit hmm. yeah i've been into some dirty stuff just guys like i like i feel like i need to take a shower after they're hmm. playing at fucking dark matter Oh, uh, we no, gotta. We should go. We're to going, that. dude. Holy shit! I fucking love Dark Matter. Yeah. When is that? That uh, is looking so, like April thirteenth. Yeah, I'll be up there. So I plan on uh, driving up the Friday, and then we'll be up there Friday night. Oh yeah, Saturday. I'm going on a ghost tour on the thirteenth. So I'm gonna have to work around that. So I'm gonna go to it too. I'll figure it out. Nice. Hell yeah, dude! That sounds awesome. Well, uh, I uh, think that's that's cool. I'm excited to uh, to see another, I don't know, up and coming band that's like doing stuff. They're making waves. Somehow they came on your hey, they radar. Played, uh, they played New Brooklyn. Oh, that's sick. Yeah, that's the new New Brooklyn too. I'm looking at some of these other venues. See if I know any of them. Uh, another band too, uh, worth noting that I really like. If you were to be into like a shoegazy type vibes, is uh, Lantlos. Uh, I know I've sent them to you a while back, William, but their earlier stuff is more black metal influence, but their newer stuff is more uh, like shoegazy, but it's super droning, vibey type stuff. Uh, really been into them. Jeez. Sounds cool. Um, I need to listen to them again. I definitely listened to them that one time you sent it, but I don't remember, unfortunately. I If... if I, I'd like to put the bands in the description, at, you know, once this is published. That way, if people that's a good want call. to check it out, yeah. Uh, so I know one band I just I've been into for like the last month and a half, and you, Topher, you showed them to me a, a while back, and it's Zill and Ardor. Um, oh, they are, dude, yeah, they're good. You showed they them are to me so, too. That their latest album. Um, is every, I love every single song on it. It's this like it's black metal meets like blues meets uh kind of thrash a little bit. Um, like meets just I, I don't know. It's it's cool. It's like uh it's like has some African inspired uh stuff to it as well. That's um that makes it really unique. Uh. I, I don't know even know how to pronounce the song that I love most by them. Goddardamerung. Goddardamerung. Yeah. Yeah. I know the that, song that, you're talking about, so that you pronounced it well enough. Also, Devil is Fine is always going to be a banger. That's part of the, like, bluesy, like... You know, it's got that stuff. swing like uh, I don't want to say chain gang, but it, it's it's got that stomp vibe to it. I think that's uh, what he was going for. Like uh, Zeal and Ardor, like uh, it is fronted by an uh, African American guy. He's he's a uh, it's so it is different. I'm just saying, say don't smile at me. No, uh, it's just why yeah. you say it like that <laughs> because why I don't be, know how to talk about it and like make it like yeah, oh yeah, that's the that's the reason why. why. I don't know. It's a I, black I can't, guy. I yes. could be wrong, but I don't know if he is uh, African American. I think he has like European in him, but he he is uh, black. All right, well y'all well, get regardless of his race is sick shit. Yeah. I'm gonna get another um, beer while y'all look up this man's ancestry dot com. Trying to think, but yes, then... he's he's got a lot of. Uh, so he's from Switzerland and New York City. So. 
I don't know wow. where exactly he was born. But yes, he, he's got a, a lot of cool influences that he pulls from while having this like black metal uh, kind of background to it. Uh, it's interesting stuff. It's, mm. To me, it's something that hasn't been done before, which stands out, especially like the black the metal. Yeah. So, Zeb, what about you? Dude, personally, I've been getting into drive-by truckers. Um, okay. They have so much music. And have y'all listened to much of their stuff at all? They're kind of Aren't they kind of uh, jam bandy? Jam bands? Not. No? I think they have some jam band elements, but... Okay. To be honest, they lean a lot more into like um, they, they get more heavy than you would think. They like, were at um, 420 Fest, weren't they? That year we went. I I believe they were. Yeah, I don't think we saw them. But like, yeah. they'll have some songs with like some fuzzed out guitars. Like they've got a song uh, called Buttholeville, and uh, <laughs> it has like a punk energy to it. It's really cool. They do like a. Uh, I don't even know what you call them genre wise, but it's somewhere on the spectrum of like country and rock and the lyricism and the story is just so good. Like they've got a song called 18 wheels of love that the chorus is mama ran off with a trucker and it just, it hits. I, I just love that song. So like some of the songs are goofy. Some of them are like just truly just like they cut you. I've been obsessed with drive by truckers lately. Um, and along with them, a band called Lucero, they, yeah, they're a little bit more into like the just country rock style. Um, insanely good songwriting, really cool to sound to them. Um, and then the guy from Lucero also did this album called the evening redness in the West. It's a concept album based on blood Meridian. And is some of the best songs. It's like some of my favorite songs I've ever heard. So, like, that guy's name is Ben Nichols. He's incredible. Uh, an album being inspired by Blood Meridian sounds really badass. Dude, it hits. All of the songs are kind of written about the different characters. Um, so the lyrics will just kind of reference their story throughout the whole thing. And he, he it's incredible. It's it's so good. Chewy, do you, if you have ever any... read... No, 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 you're good. I was going to say, if you've never read Blood Meridian, the song for The Judge is the only one that doesn't have any lyrics, which is the scariest possible thing you could do with that song. But it makes sense. <laughs> it makes perfect sense. So, Chewy, All right, what are we do, on? You have any, do you have any artists? Uh, honestly, I've been just kind of just doing a lot of like memory landing shit recently, like where I just, just go and listen back to a lot of stuff. Like I've for the like past couple weeks or past couple months actually i've gone to listen to like every single one okay rock album uh, i've gone through and like r just re-listened to every single one of them again like from beginning to end and just sat through all of them uh but dude. like I, I i it's it's always like really good just to get back into that um especially now that we're writing a lot more um because that was a lot of my inspiration to start writing anyway like just music in general but like it was just really good to just get back into the, to doing that because I think it I think it gave me a good bit of drive to like start writing a lot more stuff recently, just to to get back into doing it again. That's but, what you want. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, cause like you just go back to the basics of like what got you into doing it and get that drive again. But um, uh, I my dude like one okay rock every now and then I still go through like phases with it where I like. I don't know. I have to listen to like them for like a couple days straight. Like you just yeah. get in the mood where they're like, this is, they it. have these, like this pot, the pop punk elements, but it's more rock type stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to really explain it, but I don't know. They have, they, they have, they have a good mesh of everything that yeah. they have going on. Like the pop punk, like they're going to just more like of like progressive rock kind of sounds for a couple things that they had. And then just going and just to like doing like sometimes even just throwing their wheelhouse and just doing just like a rock and roll kind of sound for a song entirely. And then their last single was just that. a straight up just rock song. Yeah, it's, absolutely. The name of it's yeah. fleeting me. It was yeah. just like a. Um, yeah. It was really. I, know, I wish I, I had been listened to any of their newer stuff, but of course they're older. Like their first two to three albums are really, really good. 
uh, but I know they kind of went more pop ish. Yeah. Uh, towards... But like, they're still they're still good. Like, if you listen to them all the way through, um, everything like there's nothing that like is absolute sewage by any means. No, they're, um, they're fantastic like, musicians. Yeah, they are. They are. They're really good. Um, but uh, it, it's just something like you kind of like just go with the wayside when it comes with like some artists like. I feel like uh, sometimes when it comes to music, depending on what artist you're following, um, it either, like, progresses, like, how you're watching, like, say, like, cartoons or, like, a show or something like that. Like, it hits, like, a certain criteria of, like, different group of people. And, like, during that time, like, for, like, the Jinsei X Boku, that was, like, my time to, like, shine with that shit. Where I was, like, super, like, into that. But, like, like, this most recent album probably hits like it like tickles that itch for somebody that's just not necessarily me but it's still good i'll have to check it out but um uh other than that like nothing necessarily changed right now for like what i'm listening to that's new uh listening to a lot of slaughter to prevail um i'm just going through and listening to a good bit of that and alex terrible's vocals are just they just get me going. That's oh, pretty God, much it. Get right everybody now. going, dude. That guy's nuts. Yeah, they, yeah, he he can he can start a riot just by walking into it. <laughs> but um, not really too much. Um, actually, I uh, last uh, past two days, I actually was listening to a lot of Nirvana. Actually, yeah, you are. Um, oh, dude, I, I haven't really had a drive to listen to them, and then like like something came across TikTok, and I was like, oh, well, I'm just listening to Nirvana for a little while then. Yeah. I'm actually about okay. This is actually relevant. Um, I'm about to put out another version of my song with Grimsley called uh, "Dead Inside Again" with uh, an artist named Aiden Mustaine. He mm-hmm. uh, he he tries or he he goes for that song or that sound that's like Nirvana esque, and holy shit, homie is so good, and he has that style of. Uh, uh, vocal you probably like his, his his music i'll have to send it to you but yeah shout out him for for sure swag yeah what anyway, you clayton. To, clayton oh dude none of mine are nearly as cool as that um so my main guy that i've been listening to i've been deep diving on um for the last couple of weeks is tony rice um he's a you know, old school, like back in the eighties, kind of, um, bluegrass guitar player. And the fact, the the fact of the matter is, I, I just cannot believe how good the man is at the instrument. And it's honestly just, it's infuriating how good he is at the instrument. Like there, there are people that even nowadays, like your Billy strings guys and your Trey Hensley's and your, uh, like the guys that are winning bluegrass guitar player of the year. I don't think any of them can play this shit. And Jeez. like, that's just how crazy this guy is. And like, I've just been deep diving a lot of his albums and, uh, trying to learn what I can from them, you know, as far as just from like a, a musicality standpoint as well, as just like a guitar playing standpoint. Yeah. Yeah, I'm still on that grass shit, basically. I went into a deep dive of some like old school blues, uh, maybe a month ago now, um, just to change the pace. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, you listen to nothing but screaming all day, every day, and it's nice to kind of yeah. get something fresh on the ears. But uh, I swear to God, I think, and I tell people this all the time: bluegrass is the extreme metal of country that was a good way to put that just the instrumentation the the intensity that comes with bluegrass and then you have these vocals that a lot of times like yelling and you know the i don't know the exact like terms that you know the best describe their singing style but there's so many instruments so many things that they're pulling from and all these people are all playing completely separate instruments but they're all gelling together at the same time it's just this wall of musical instruments and it's extreme it's fucking badass yeah. <laughs> and it's it. dude it's really cool how like a lot of those old school bands would perform and record like everything they did from live to their recordings was all around like one mic so the guys would stand in a circle and if somebody took a solo you would literally step closer to the mic 
Yeah, and all, and so yeah. They, yeah. Most guys they knew out how to, here that play grass music, they still do that. Like they'll play yeah. live like that. Gal, the fiddle player will step up to the mic <laughs> and then he'll back off. And then the banjo player comes up and like it's awesome, dude. <laughs> it's so bad. Really? I love bluegrass. And the thing is, every one of in order to be in a bluegrass band, everybody has to be a basic virtuoso of their instrument. You can't be a bad banjo player and be in a grass band or be a bad mandolin player and be in a grass band. Like, it is crazy just how difficult this type of music is. Mm. It's fucking insane, dude. I've been learning it for like three years at this point, and I'm barely scratching the surface of it. Yeah. I think my introduction to bluegrass... Sorry, Christopher. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say my introduction to bluegrass, <laughs> I don't listen to much of it at all, but I fuck with Trampled by Turtles. Oh, they, dude. They got another one on my list here recently. I've been deep diving Very Trampled good. by Turtles. I'm good. so obsessed with that band. I have been for a while. Yeah. I don't, I don't listen to much bluegrass, but like the one band that like got me to like start listening to a little bit of bluegrass. Bluegrass was uh, the tallest man on earth. Tallest man. That was like I don't know them. Yeah, yeah. They uh. So I actually found them through um, uh, Chance actually. Chance Taylor, I, the guy who did our uh our uh logo art. Shout out to Chance. Yeah. Um, I got that old tattooed on me. Yeah. Um. But he had. There's a song called "Won't Be Found." Uh, just like the way he like uses his like lyrics and uh, like the the sound of his voice when he sings I, I, for some reason that, that brought appeal to me and I don't, I don't really listen too much bluegrass myself mm-hmm. and uh, it kind of got me into like giving it a shot okay so. dude I think I'm the I don't know how long ago that was he showed you that song but um no y- you were the one who showed him that because he, he talked about uh the one time he rode with you yeah uh to come visit and uh y'all listen to bluegrass and it, you changed his life <laughs> i know exactly what song it was too it was freaking turmoil and tinfoil by billy strings and yep. Yep. that song went off and he was like damn that was really good <laughs> that song hits oh we just got taken on a ride bro that's the one dude that song fucks <laughs> anytime people hear billy strings for the first time i think it changes their life immediately literally a dude. guy texted me from work today with that exact video of turmoil and tim boy he said dude this is crazy <laughs> dude i'll tell you another thing that he doesn't get enough credit for is being weird because there is Fuck. another live video you can find I think it's it might be titled something like Dark Billy or something, but it's him and he wears these like pointy Team Rocket sunglasses and he plays a Digitech DG20, that like Casio digital guitar that they made. And these things are super rare, insanely expensive to get. I, I got to play one one time and they are, it is so insanely difficult to play it, but he plays it just like he plays acoustic. And it is one of the sickest things I've ever seen. Yeah, he's a strange guy, man, but he's fucking dope. He seems like a really cool guy to be around, too. Like, he just seems like a genuine dude. 100%. He, he's ushering in this, like, newer age of bluegrass that's bringing excitement to a genre of music that tends to lean towards an older generation. And yeah. by him pulling from this, like, Willie Nelson style like influence, which is so cool that he was able to collaborate with him uh, mm-hmm. on that song. Yeah, but he's he's ushering in this like uh, hippie style bluegrass, and it's a lot more carefree. But he's just so yeah. fucking tight, like it's insane, and it's bringing a, a younger generation into this music, and it's bringing life into the the scene, and it's exciting and yeah. Dude's yeah. selling out arenas. A lot of old heads and, you know, the, the people that gatekeep metal are the same fucking way. Trying to, The bluegrass guys are trying to gatekeep that. And uh, it, it's kind of frustrating whenever Billy's, like, breathing new life into the genre. Like, nobody else is. Well, Molly Tuttle, you know, she's doing it too. But, um, you know, just, like, these, these big people that are doing this. And then you're going to say, that ain't fucking bluegrass. This, that's got a snare drum in it. 
bluegrass ain't got a snare drum. <laughs> like, yeah. It's the only like, snare drum that guy's on that banjo. Yeah. Like, it's so infuriating, but. Yeah, I think it's yeah. awesome what he's doing, and he's aware of that. You know, when you get that big, people are going to hate on you no matter what kind of genre or whoever you are. Yeah. Ain't that the damn truth? Dude, I got a damn DM. As soon as I got back from uh, – I posted the picture of, like, me signing shit and everything, and homie just, like, uh, just got in my DMs. When are you releasing the instrumental, Artard? <laughs> Why does he want and the then he what? proceeded he proceeded to spam me instrumental 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 like over and over and over i had to block him and everything but his name his his name was schizo something i don't know Dogson. but i was like yeah his name was what, schizo does he want to rap on it I'm... no 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 I, he just like he obviously my vocals sucked on it which i get but damn like what leave am me I alone finding him no, don't Doxon. look him up. He's got, he's it, got like, in the no comments. followers. I'm not, I don't want to. All right, guys, if you can find the uh, the hater of Williams, uh, of Grimsley, oh, uh, oh, we oh, will donate. <laughs> I'm not telling name? you the guy's name, but I, I'm just saying that shit pissed me off all day yeah. yesterday. All right, dude. Oh. After, all, after the, good, the good Saturday night I had, I was just <laughs> mad as hell all day. I was so get back I was down so here sick. in the dirt, guys. If if we can get 500 likes on this video, we will get Williams Hater on this podcast, and we will circumcise him. I don't think uh, we want somebody like that. I think that that person genuinely has issues. Whoever dude, they are, 500 likes. Foreskin? Does he sound like he had foreskin? Matthew said we circumcise him. It's going to be hard to do that if he doesn't have foreskin. Does I mean, he sound like he, he has foreskin? Does he sound like he has foreskin? Uh, considering, let me look up the stats. Hang on. No. <laughs> what stats are you looking up? I'm saying Thank how you many for doing people that. we needed somebody in the U.S. are circumcised. All right, raise of hands here. Who's circumcised? Um, I think I know what that oh, means. Oh shit! We have one. <laughs> nah. Uh, I was gonna say that right. Right. Dude, geez, right. up to eighty percent of men are circumcised. So we have a twenty percent chance that this guy has uh, has like foreskin that we could circumcise. My mommy and my daddy took away my hoodie. <laughs> my favorite hoodie. <laughs> Damn, dude! I'll, I will never be complete. I will never be complete. I will Give never it back. know how that good no matter, up, dude. no matter how much <laughs> I spend on foreskin restoration, it's not coming back. And you know that's not covered by insurance. Do you Wait, know they call it a they pre-existing actually, issue? Do you know that they actually do make sleeves that you can uh, put oh, yeah. on that give oh, yeah. you the feeling back again? Like it's super cheap. Yeah, like, they make they little, make a sheath. Yeah, they make a sheath Damn, you can put dude. yourself in. Yeah, 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 you can keep it. You can keep it sheathed all day. Like it's. Shout out PKA. <laughs> they dude, got sponsored like by that blade, company. Dude. Who is going to invent my... the condom that does this? <laughs> what the hell? It might make me actually start using them. Like, come they on. Say, yeah, act, oh my God. They say that apparently after like two days or is something like that, it like you get all your feeling back, which is, I is don't know warm? what feeling I lost. <laughs> dude, that's true. You never know. Dude. Oh, man. That's sounds, what if that's, that's just awful? awful? <laughs> what what if it's just terrible? I'm not gonna lie, maybe you'd have to like make sure it's clean properly. You know, you get like it's too much work. It it would be a lot of work. Damn. Yeah. Anyway. So yeah, I don't know about you guys, this, but I am hungry. hungry. Yeah. Are you saying the, that you're ready to get off? All this got you hungry. Uh, no, I'm. I haven't eaten. I'm hungry. I've you sure it's you sure it's not us talking beer to and I'm hungry. You sure it's not us talking about all this penis that's got you hungry? All right, all right. You know what? You know what, Zeb? <laughs> you're right. You're right. I just want to slob on some knob. All right, man. Give me that glizzy. I'm tired of fucking. Yeah, dude. I, <laughs> oh, I get it. I get it. The Zeb, man. you just want to see Chewy. me say that I'm gay? You, Chewy. <laughs> you sound like up man right now. <laughs> What's up, man? Not much, you. Oh man, <laughs> Zeb, you're the reason I drink. <laughs> oh, oh, man. 
God. <laughs> no wonder I'm scared of pussy. It's scary. God. God. Jesus Christ. Do you ever know what happens in that hole? Yeah. You're just looking at it like like Georgie in the storm drain. <laughs> Bro, there, it's a fucking there's a, a, there's a balloon. <laughs> no, it's 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 a it's a it's a Dark Souls boss. It's the ceaseless I... discharge. Oh, <laughs> the worst one. Yeah, nobody likes it. Who have you have y'all been playing any video games? Yes, yes, oh, I have. I've uh, been playing I played a video game but, in like three years. Armored Core and occasionally Ghost Recon. I've been playing the ever living shit out of Elden Ring recently. I, I, I'm trying to 100% skate three on my 360. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> I am so addicted to this game. Which, by the way, Skate Four, uh, Topher, have you heard about like some of the updates and some of the stuff like that uh, they're gonna do with it? Uh, I followed it and I somewhat kept up with the early stages of it, with like the pre-alpha and whatnot. What? But I, I haven't kept up with it within the last couple months. Well, like, apparently, like, people are a little bit iffy because it's going to be, like, it's going to be only online gameplay. Like, you you can't, like, uh, you can't just play on your own. You have to be connected to the internet. It's going to be free, uh, so that's a good thing. But um, they're going to be using ads in the game and stuff, which I understand that to an extent. And then yeah. a lot of the places are going to be like customizable but apparently the whole map is going to be like open like nothing's locked off like to other people um but this is all just like stuff i'm hearing now i'm just super excited about skate 4 and i'm ready for it mm. right, i've been excited since it got announced just because of how impactful that last game was skate 3 so mm. it's exciting to know that they're you just better have a banging soundtrack that's all i care about yeah i mean that the Skate 3 soundtrack, I didn't realize how goaded it was until, like, later on. The first time I ever saw anything related to Skate 3 was with PewDiePie. That's crazy. Oh, that man, he revived that game. that game. He revived like, Minecraft, too, to an extent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I I never, like, like I knew Skate 3, like, I saw it in, like, the games, but, like, like in game stores and stuff like that, but I never actually, like, went out of my way to get it. And so after he played it, William and I played it a lot back in the day. Yeah, I beat every one of them. Every one of them bitches skate. Oh, skate yeah. it. Skate one. Skate two. Skate three. Well, I so didn't play good. skate it because I didn't have the Wii. Yeah, I had the Wii, so I played skate it, and it was really just skate one, but with a few less bells and whistles. To be honest with you, that's yeah, a, that's a, that's a Go ahead. You had to kick flip ahead. like this. Like you had to literally like you do motion controls to like flip the board. I beat that game. That sounds up. brutal. Not the day, y'all. Circumcision's going down. I believe yeah. it. Free the penis. It doesn't make sense. My Free bad. the penis. I didn't mean to interrupt y'all, but I was just reading and I was in, like enticed. Circumcision's yeah, going down. Boy, keep him warm. It's only fifty five percent, dude. Okay, There's no one, reason for us to be doing it. Okay, one last big question before we kind of call it a night. You have a child that has a penis. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> do, <laughs> do you have them circumcised? Yes. It's gonna be a clean look. It's gonna be a clean look, dude. I ain't teaching them how to. I ain't teaching them how to I'm, clean something. I don't got. I'm definitely not doing it. I don't think I'm gonna do it either. Damn, dude. Well, I'm pro probably not gonna be a father. Hopefully, but. I don't want to be Same. either, but just yeah. for but maybe I I'll should have said honest, it. If it you could go make... back, would you have it? Well, it doesn't make any would, sense. Would you would you cut your 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 boy's penis off? Um, that's tough. Because you're more likely to have a child. It's tough. That's true. Uh, I mean, yeah, I think deep down, I don't want to do it, but realistically, because I am not rocking the hood, uh, I think. <laughs> It would be kind of if I mean I would obviously I could learn, but it would be well. You'd be jealous your whole life. It'd be hard to love him. Exactly. 
<laughs> you will give him constant side eyes till the him day and he his, dies. Or him and his complete intact penis. The way God made him. He's you a will drown man. him whenever he's going through high school. He's <laughs> like, you fucking you come home drunk one day. Just drown him. No. He, oh, God, he, God. he comes home. <laughs> hey, Dad. God, what, you think you're better than me? <laughs> okay. What did I tell you about wearing hoodies? <laughs> <laughs> did <laughs> brings up trauma. Would you go back if you could? If you could have it, would you have it? Right now. I mean, it's, it's kind of hard to say because I don't know what it feels like to have it. Can I have it for a minute and then like figure test it out? It a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Can I test drive it? Test drive it? Yeah. <laughs> I'd say that's fair. If I could test I drive my foreskin, I'll definitely do it. If I could test drive my yeah. foreskin. <laughs> God. Yeah. <laughs> I guess I feel like I'm not too concerned with like just getting it back genuinely. Like uh I don't know, maybe I guess if I don't if I could undo it I would. But like it's not a it's not a huge deal. I just think it's Imagine you've never heard of circumcision before. And and just if you can completely distance it from your mind and then you're like, Hey, part of what we do, we give him vaccines. So he doesn't get sick. Um, we are going to cut the umbilical cord. We're going to make that look all neat and tidy, you know, whatever way we're going to do all this stuff. Also, we're going to cut some of the skin off of his dick so that, uh, the we're going to, we're going to go do that. We're going to go cut the skin <laughs> off his dick. <laughs> There's no real reason because to it. because yeah. some yeah because some thirty year old women have the gall to say a child's penis looks better with a fucking hood on it. I don't fucking know. Uh, so <laughs> God, that's why I'm against so, it. <laughs> so when, when when Kosei was living with me, um, uh, the Japanese exchange student. If you're listening to me, Kosei. Uh, mm-hmm. I hope you enjoy this conversation that I'm bringing up that you have with me. Uh, he asked me, like, because <laughs> he's like, well, I've watched a lot of, like, uh, European and American porn. Um, it's, it's, a lot, it's a lot different. Uh, he's like, I was like, yeah. He's like, do you shave your balls? I'm like, I don't, I don't know, man. And he's like, is your, are you, are you, do you, have, are you cut? Do you have a, do you have a foreskin? I'm like, no. He's like, that's weird. You're so weird. I'm like, damn, I'm like, dude. Dude. I'm like, all right, man. Other places, other he, countries, other cultures. Man, I can't. I was going to say something bad, and I ain't going to do that. I probably shouldn't have a podcast. Yeah, that's wow. a good call. Oh we'll, we'll wait until it's over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we're kind of... On that note. <laughs> at that time. <laughs> let's say something worse. Now, let's talk about them liberals. Am I... oh, no, I'm joking. No. <laughs> anyway, Chewy, how about you give us... A wild ass noise to end this off. Oh, I got, I got, I got a good one. I got a good one. Let's end it with some mm, motherfucking babes. What the fuck?